Okay. Let's go. Yep. This one too? No, don't worry about that one. Just this one. Amen. Well, good evening, everyone. God bless you all. Thank you all for joining us today here in the for the in the church house for the word of God. Glory to God. Just hit that button on the bottom. The blue button. Oh, share? Yeah. No, wait a minute. You might be hitting the wrong one. Oh, this is blocking it. everyone we want to welcome you this evening hallelujah praise jesus god is good he is faithful god hallelujah well we're going to open up and pray in jesus name we also want to welcome those who is watching this broadcast we pray that this service tonight will be a blessing to each of us Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you, Father, for who you are. We thank you, Father, for your present, your anointing in this place, your anointing, burden removing, yoke destroying, power of God. Let be manifest in this place in such a way like never been before. Lord, we thank you that you are faithful God and as we seek in you this morning seek in your face seek in your ways and Lord we know Lord God that you said in your word that you will never leave us and never forsake us and you will not give us more that we able able to handle it and Father we thank you Lord God that you are God of supernatural strength you are God of supernatural courage. And Father, you are God of also who give the boldness. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the spirit of boldness is rest up in your people. They will be meek, they will not be weak, but they will be meek and humble before you. But they also rise up in the power and authority of your word they will speak your word in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord God. They will not look at your that any circumstances, but they will look up to you in the bigness of who you are. That you are God, who you are big and supernatural God. And nothing is impossible for you. Father, we're calling in the restorations and the financial Ram and people's lives, we break every spirit of poverty and sufficiency. Your God is more than enough. We thank you, Lord God, that you will provide all of the needs of your people, that you will open the doors that no man or devil in hell will be able to close. Supernatural doors, supernatural relationships. Father, we thank 
you that your people they will be in the right place in the right time. They will step in in, in the divine connections from heaven in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, and they will obey you, Lord God, because they heart is call up in your name. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your people they will be a givers. And they will support the work of God. And because they will obey your word, they will bring the tithes and offerings to the storehouse. And you said in your word that they, you will open the windows of heaven. And Father, that you will pour out your blessings in the name of Jesus. Let the anointing of prosperity rest upon your people. That your anointing, Lord God, bring the restoration, bring the manifestation of your promises in the name of Jesus. And they will not do in their own thing, so they go where they want to go. But because of your anointing, rest up in them, Lord God, that you are bringing the supernatural provision supernatural vision, Lord God, what you want them to accomplish. And Father, not just to be accomplished, but to be a prosper and to be a financier for the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Supernatural provision, supernatural incomes, we call it in finances into the kingdom in the name of Jesus. That your people will be a distribution center for the kingdom of God. And Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Father, we break and we curse every spirit of poverty. We break it off of God's people in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that your people walk in obedience. They are walk in submission to your will, to your purpose, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, this evening, Pastor Larry is here. He's going to minister to us. Amen. Amen. So it is power to in a seat. See, God, he, when we saw the seed, it's not that you, God needs your money, but when you sow the seed, you're releasing the connection of, of faith. Especially if you sow in the seed, like from, the, from when you don't have, or when the Lord's speaking to you, and you just sow in the seed of faith, you, you stay in, in, in agreement with heaven. And see, a lot of things will manifest in your life is through the seed. Supernatural. And I'm telling you from the experience in my own life, because the seed is the supernatural connection with heaven. God through the seed, when you obey the voice of God, God through the seed will open a supernatural doors. You know, for example, if you seeking, you know, you need a, like employment, or you need a, maybe housing, or you maybe need something in your life, and, and a natural is like, ooh, I don't know how to get it, you know, because maybe a credit situation, maybe income situation, maybe whatever the situation is, but when you sow in the seed, and you release your faith and say, Father, I sow the seed, and I need this in my life. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you will bring. Because see, if this a dollar or a hundred dollars or whatever, it's, if it's not going to meet your need, it is a seed. And when you sow the seed, you release your faith and you say, Father, I thank you, Lord God, as I sow the seed, you will bring the supernatural connection in my life and you will open a door for me in Jesus' name. You speak this over your life. Whatever your life is, you, whatever the need in your life is, maybe if there's some restoration in your life, maybe it's whatever the need is, it's just between you and the Lord. And you will see how God, he will open a door for you. Supernatural. And, and you know, it could be maybe other people in that position, maybe then in a natural, maybe even more qualified, but because of your seed and your faith, 
God will open a door for you to step in. in. You can have a hundred application and certain position that but they will pick up yours because of the supernatural seed and your releasing your faith. It's working, brothers and sisters, working. It's so many I, I can just testify and testify how many times God opened the doors for me as the before I even met Pastor Larry because I was always a sower. I was always a giver. I always bring the tithes and offerings, support the uh, ministry. When God put me under certain ministry, I'm supporting this ministry and, and, and uh, always sowing the seed. And God will always make it a way. And not just make it a way, he will bring you to the place there a provision with the success and where you go up and up. And you will see the word of God is working. It's going to come through the seed. Through the seed. If you not be trust in a hundred dollars, how you think God will bless you with more? When we, but and I even tell the some people have like a and certain they call fix and come. God, if you even tithe from the little, God will bring you a supernatural provision. I mean, like, like never before. But you believe that. The, the power of seed. And not just to give. You expect. It's like your connection with the heavenly. It's nothing wrong. God is Collins have no problem for you to be rich or to be have more than enough. God's problem is covenants. If you if you just like just me me, no. For you to be prosper is not just for you to be prosper. It's to be a blessing to other people. When people need something, that you be able to bless them. Amen. For God, He wants to bless your people. That His blessing and will be in you and being seen in this earth. Hallelujah. He wants to be you healthy, that his name be also glorified, that he is not just a, a saver, but he is also a healer. That his name is also glorified in your body, in your life. Because when you seek, that he's not bring the glory to his name. He wants to, that your family be restored because it's also bringing the glorification to him. That God is the God of restoration. It's so easy to just throw the towel and walk out of the relationship. That's not a big deal. It's very easy. But for the fight, for the family to fight for your marriage, to fight for your children, that's going to take a boldness. It's going to take a humble heart because your heart is wounded and hurt. And you're giving this to the Lord and you said, Father, I choose to forgive that I should be forgiven. See, when we forgive those who hurt us and mistreat us or did something wrong toward us, see, the scripture says, forgive. But you can't do it on your own self, so you have to fight in yourself, Lord, I, I give my right to be right, and I choose to forgive, and Lord, heal my heart, and it takes the humble heart. And Father, I choose to forgive. And when you forgive, you also receive the healing and you receive the forgiveness. That's for you. And I proclaim and declare in the name of Jesus that this is the year when the restoration come and manifest in your family. I proclaim and declare in the name of Jesus 
This is the year when the relationships has been restored in the name of Jesus. And every work of the devil that come against your family, that come against the destiny that the Lord has for you, I proclaim and declare in the name of Jesus that work of Satan has been broken and has been destroyed in authority in the name of Jesus. I call on you the restoration in Jesus' name in your life, in your relationships in your family, in your finances, in your, uh, in your body, restoration in Jesus' name, in your mind, hallelujah. Your mind is the mind of Christ. Your mind is the mind. Of, put the hand, put the hand in your mind and says, my mind is the mind of Christ. My thoughts is the God's thoughts. I receive the mind of Christ in Jesus name hallelujah you speak to your mind those who has been diagnosed with whatever the diagnosis they put on you the devil wants to put some diagnosis in you you speak to your mind you go against in the name of Jesus. And you said that my mind is the mind of Christ. My thoughts is the thoughts of God. That every decision that I make in my life should be according to the word of God. And the plan of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Well, Pastor Larry is here. He is coming. Are you sure you want to keep preaching? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> You're doing a good job. Amen. Amen. Glory. Wasn't she doing a good job, y'all? Amen. Yes. Prophesying and declaring. Yes. I see that. That's 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 a that's a that's a good that's a good word. Amen. Go to glory to God. And he that believed that will experience the fruit of it. Amen. Well, we're talking tonight health and healing is in the power of the spoken word of God. Health and healing is in the power of the spoken word of God. How many of you know that God is concerned about your health? That's so, that's so many people that are sick today. A lot of people sick. But you know what? God don't get nervous yet because a lot of people are sick. He, he, he's not getting nervous. What God is doing He's looking across every one of those people that are sick. And he's seeing who is exercising faith. Who is releasing their faith, believing. Who is it that is not allowing doubt to stop me from moving in their life? Glory to God. Doubt is a thief that will block the will of God in your life. Amen. Amen. So let's believe God tonight. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for your word that will go forth in this place. And we ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive, make my tongue as of a pen of a ready writer, to write your word upon the hearts, upon the mind of your people, that they will know the truth, and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we thank you now, because you said in your word, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse number verse number. Verse number, I'm sure told all about it, that you that, that you hasten to perform your word. Amen. That your word will not return unto you void. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for it. We thank you for it, Father. And as we speak your word, we believe that you will confirm your word with signs following in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Are you believing with me tonight? Amen. Because I'm believing God, not only for you that are here, I'm believing God for the hundreds that's going to be joined, that is joining us right now over the internet. Amen. Glory to God. I'm believing God for, the, for those people that are joining us over the internet 
also that they will receive their healing, their deliverance, their miracle. Amen. And I want you to receive yours also. Glory to God. Because I know that we serve a God that is able. We know we serve a God that can. We know we serve a God that won't, that will not lie to us. Amen. He will not lie to us. Had he said it, should he not make it good? I believe that God will make his word good in our life. Amen. But we got to come to the place to believe. We got to believe today. Are y'all ready to believe today? Glory to God. Oh, Reuben, you just joined me, huh? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, you just, you just got accepted. Amen. To the family. Glory to God. Now, I want to uh, just, uh, en just encourage you guys because, you see, we believe that God wants us to, 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 to get the word in us so that we can release the word. See, notice, notice, that, notice that the title of this message, Health and Healing is in the Power of the Spoken Word. Amen? Health and Healing is in the Power of the Spoken Word. So, if we're going to speak the word, if we don't speak the word, and we know we should be speaking the word, then the enemy is going to keep you from accepting what God has already made available for you. But when you speak the word, the devil is going to, he's going to stand back off of you, and he's, going to, and he's going to see, are you really serious about what you're doing? He's going to see, are you meaning business? Amen. And the moment you take that bold stand and you, and you begin to declare the word of God over your situation, over your life, and over your health, and over your healing, and over your family, that's when the devil is going to back up and say, he know what he's talking about. I'm, we got to leave him alone. Amen. We got to wait till he make a mistake. And then once he make a mistake, then we're going to zero in on him. <laughs> Amen. He waits for you to make a mistake. Why he wanted you to make a mistake? Because when you make a mistake, guilt, he, he can put a guilt trip on you. He can cause you to he can cause you to, to be guilty, amen, for, for, for anything that can stop you from moving forward in the things of God. He'll use that, he'll use that against you. Glory to God. But I believe today that God is not going to allow guilt to come on you. I believe that God is going to bring you to a place of, of health and healing and prosperity. Amen. I believe God is going to bring you to a place where there's more than enough to meet every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I believe that today is your breakthrough day. Amen. Is it all right for me to believe that for you guys? Amen. Is it all right for me to believe that? Because that's what that's where my heart is at, and that's what I'm believing for you. I'm believing that this is your breakthrough day. Today is a day that you will never forget. Glory to God. Today is a day that you will never forget because Jesus Christ is still Lord, and He's on the scene right now, working on your behalf, bringing you to a place, bring you to a place of hope, bring you to a place of peace bring you to a place of contentment. He bring you to a place of, 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 of assurance, that sweet assurance. Amen. But you know what? He's not going to forget. He's not going to forget how much you love him. He's not going to forget how much you depend on him. He's not going to forget the things that you have gone through because of him. Amen. He's going to he gonna look at you and say, he not only uh, loved me, he not only cared for me, but he also trusts me. That's what he's going to say about you. That he, you also, that he also trusts me. Amen. That's what he's saying about you. Amen. And, and when he's and when he making that statement, you know that God's about to do something mightily in your life. God's about to show up and show himself strong on your behalf. Amen. Each and every individual in here, and those of you that are with us by the internet, I want you to pull your antennas up high tonight. I want you to pull your antennas up high. You know, I just when I just take my antenna and I just pull it up high. Glory to God, because I want I don't want to miss out on nothing. <laughs> I don't want to miss out on nothing. I want to hear everything that God has to say. Amen. Concerning my health and concerning my healing. Because as you said, this is my night, and I will not let it go. I will not. <laughs> Amen. There you go. Keep talking. Amen. <laughs> I want to make sure we have volume because this morning we didn't have volume. Amen. This morning we didn't have volume, so I want to make sure we have volume today. Amen. So now, as we as we as we continue with this, we believe that God is going to show up, and He's going to show Himself strong. Amen. And your life is going to be that much the better because you was here tonight. And for you that are with us by the internet, your life is going to be much better because you joined us tonight by the way of the internet. God is going to touch you. God is going to minister to you. God is going to cause you to experience His love and His compassion. Amen. Look at the Book of Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs, let's look at chapter 3. 
the book of Proverbs chapter 3. Glory to Shekim, my Lord of And then look at verse, verse number, look at verse number 5 with me. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. Verse 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. He shall direct thy path. Verse number 7 says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. It shall be health. Notice what he said, it shall be health to thy novel and mar to thy bones. Amen. So we know that God wants to bring us into divine health. God wants to bring us into divine healing. But God also wants us to, he will also want us to trust him in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the process of us coming to this place in him. Amen. He wants us to trust him. Amen. So when we, when we come to this place, we, we got to say, Lord, regardless of what the doctor said, regardless of what the pain is, that I'm experiencing, regardless of what I'm going through, Father, I trust you. I trust you with all my heart. And God, I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. I'm not going to try to do it in my own wisdom. I'm going to wait on you, Lord, and because I trust you. You know, it's hard to wait when you when you when you when you when you uh, in pain. It's hard for you to, to sit back and be content when things are not going the way you think it ought to go. You you always got to have you always got that in the back of your head. It's got to be something that I can do, amen, to help this along, amen. I want to help God, amen. Do you ever want to help God? And 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 what we do when we're doing that, we only just get in God's way. All God's expecting out of us is to walk in faith, walk by faith and not by sight. He expecting us to when we ask him, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, your word declared that you bore my sick and you carried my diseases, and by your stripes I am healed. Father, by faith I receive my healing. And I thank you, Lord God, even though there's symptoms and the and, I, and the pain is still, I can still I'm still experiencing that in my body, but in my heart, I know that I'm healed. In my heart, I know that I'm healed. I know that I'm free. Now I got, I got I can't let that go because I gotta keep that confession coming out of my, my coming out of my spirit. I got to keep that confession in my spirit because if I let it go, then the enemy is going to make that, he's going to make that, uh, that, that what, I, what I'm still experiencing, uh, he's going to keep it real in my heart. But if I keep my eyes on the one who has healed me, instead of the problem, instead of the pain, instead of the situation, I'm going to walk in divine health. I'm going to walk in divine health regardless of what it looked like, regardless of how I feel, because I'm not looking at the situation. I'm not looking at the symptoms. I'm not looking at the pain. I'm looking to him who promised. I'm looking to him who promised. Amen. And because I'm looking to him who promised, I'm not, going to, I'm not worried about what it looked like. Why? Because God is not a man that he shall lie, nor a son of man he shall repent. If he said that he bore my sickness and carried my diseases, I believe it. I believe it. You got to believe it. Not only do you have to believe it, you got to start speaking over your life. You got to start speaking over your body. You got to start speaking health and healing over your body. Your words are powerful as a child of God. Your words are powerful as a child of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. And so now when I look at this, when I look at this, I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing how good God is. Amen. So now since we're right here, in, 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 in Proverbs chapter 3, let's go on over to Proverbs chapter 4, amen, since we're right there by it, amen, because God wants us to not only uh, trust him, but he wants us to uh, uh, pay close attention to the word. He wants to pay close attention to the word. He wants us to put the word first. He wants us to hold the word high. He wants us to esteem the word highly in our lives, amen, because if we don't, we are not, we're, we're not coming to the place where we can just receive all the promise that God has for us. We are in a place where we're just hoping. But when we can, when we can look at the word of God, and when we, can, when we can declare what God has said in his word, and when we can stand still and not be moved by circumstances, God said, this is, God, God said, this is the way that you release your faith, by taking a bold stand regardless of how you feel. Amen? Remember, remember when, 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 you was, when you were looking for answers to a situation that you was in, and, 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 you didn't, and, and, and you couldn't find it. No way you asked people and, and nothing would happen for you. But the moment you became quiet within yourself, the moment you became quiet within yourself, then the answer that you believed for came. Why? Because you stopped looking. You stopped searching. You just start waiting. You just start waiting. And because you was waiting, God came through for you. Amen. God came through for you. And that's what he want to do for you right now. God want to come through for you. He want to show himself strong on your head. In Proverbs chapter 4, look at verse number 1. He said, Hear ye, children, the instructions 
of a father. See, God has given you divine instructions tonight on how to how to have good health, amen, and walking in divine healing, amen. Notice what he said. Hear ye children the instructions of a father and attend to no knowledge, to no understanding, amen. He wants you to, he wants you to, he, what he said, I want you to put my word first and I want you to, I want you to, to, to meditate upon it and I want you to allow it to minister to your heart. I want you to allow it to minister to your heart. Amen. Don't just take it and just, uh, just, and just say, well, oh, hey, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. <laughs> How many of us have, have really, have really just forgot about what God said and we want to just, just put an old cliche out there, hey, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. See, that's a cop out. That ain't nothing but a cop out. Amen. Because you're not, you're not releasing your faith. You're stepping, you're withdrawing from your faith. You were drawn from God when you're talking like that. Amen. You were drawn from God. And, and you see, God, and God, God, God is looking for you to, to take a bold stand. Amen. God looking for you to take a bold stand. Why? Because he has a, a purpose and a plan for your life. And for you to not take it seriously, to not take it serious, you are hurting yourself. Amen. You are hurting yourself. Amen. And God wants you to experience life. He wants you to experience health. He wants you to experience healing. Amen. Why? Because you see, the more, when you begin to experience life, health, and healing that, that come from God, something that you didn't have to pay for out of your pocket, amen, you got the testimony that you can share with someone that is hurting. You got something that someone else needs to hear. Amen. You can, you can even have a pocket full of money, but if God heals you, even while you got a pocket full of money, who, my God, that's money saved. Amen. That's money saved. How that going to happen? By trusting God. You know, if, if you got, if, if you will give me as much attention that you will give the doctor when you go to the doctor, I guarantee you that you all walk out of here healed. You believe everything that doctor tells you. You believe it. Amen. And then you go talking about it. Why? Because you believe it. Why don't you believe the word that I'm giving you tonight? Why don't you believe this word with all your heart? Amen. And then let the and then and then let God begin to minister to your heart. Because I'm telling you, if you give this word half of the chance you give that doctor, you won't have to pay half as much as you paid for your healing. Glory to God. And the prescriptions are free. <laughs> <laughs> the prescriptions are free. Amen. So what do you mean prescriptions are free? I'm going to show you right now. Look at, we're still in Proverbs chapter 4. Look at verse number 20. This is your prescription. Amen. This is your prescription. Verse number 20 says, my son, attend to my words. Amen. This is your prescription to divine health and healing. Amen. My son, attend to my words. So I'm going to, I'm going to not only read the word, I'm going to, Pay attention to what the word is saying. I'm going to, and when I don't understand it, I'm going to say, Father, help me to understand. You said, attend to your words. I want to, I want to know what that means, God. Amen. So I'm going to start asking God questions concerning his word. Why? Because I want everything that he has for me to receive. Amen. If I don't understand it, I won't get it. Because if I don't understand it, I won't ask for it. But when I understand it, now I got something to release my faith for. I can ask him for it. And I can believe that he heard that he hear me when I'm talking to him. And when I know that he hear me when I'm talking to him, I know that I have that what I'm desiring of him. Amen. I know that I have it when I know that he hear me. Amen. So it says so it says in verse number in verse in verse number 20, it said, My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear to my saying. In other words, you don't allow, don't, don't take my word for granted. Don't allow what I'm saying to you just fall on a deaf ear. Amen. Take it seriously because what I'm speaking is life and health to all your flesh. The word of God going to tell us that. Amen. Notice what he said right here in verse number 21. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of, let them not depart from, from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Amen. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. 
Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Amen. Why? Verse number 22. For they are life. For they are life. Amen. So if I understand it right, the word that God is declaring over us right now are full of the life and the nature of God. And if the word of God is full of the life and the nature of God, friend, let me tell you something. Everyone in here can be healed right now. Everyone that will listen to me by the internet can be healed right now. Why? Because you don't have to depend on man. All you have to do is have faith in God and hold fast to his word and not let it depart from you. And God will not allow his word to fall to the ground. And that what he said in Isaiah 55, 11? He said, my word that go forth out of my mouth, it will accomplish that what I set it out to do. And it will not return unto me void or empty. The word of God will perform exactly what God set it out to perform. And God wants you to understand that his healing has already been released in the word. There's power in the spoken word of God to, to bring health and healing to your body. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. We just have to understand how to learn, learn how to get it and grab it. Amen. We have to grab that. Uh, we got to grab that word. We got to understand what God is saying to us. Amen. We got to understand what he's saying. Then we got to take a hold of what he's saying. Because in him, there's life and health and healing to all our flesh. God wants to do something right now so significant in our lives that if we would allow him to do so, he will bring us to a place of health and healing. Every one of us can have to walk in divine health and healing. Why? Because God is not going to tell you to do something and then take it back from you. Amen? He's not going to tell you to do something and then, and then turn around and take it back from you. He's going to give you everything that he said that, he, that, that, that is yours. And he's, going to, and he's going to cause you to experience that. He's going to cause you to experience it by faith. Amen? By faith, he's going to cause you to experience it. How is he going to do that? He's going to do it because he's going to do it with love. He's going to do it with love. He's going to do it with compassion. He's going to do it. He's going to do it because, because, you, because you, you turn your heart toward him. He's going to do it because you look to him instead of looking at the, instead of running to the medicine cabinet. <laughs> well, I got to find me some Tylenol. Oh, you just don't know the headache that I got. Oh, God, help me. <laughs> That's what he want to do. That's why he's asking you to put trust in him, not the medicine cabinet. <laughs> but I need some Tylenol. I need some Stanbacks. I need some BCs. <laughs> Amen. Those things, are, those things are out of style. They don't, they don't work no more. But the word never, the word of God always works. <laughs> oh glory to God so now we look at that verse number verse number 21 it says he said verse number 20 said let them not depart from thine eyes keep them in the midst of thine heart what is he talking about he's talking about the word why does he want you not to let it depart from your eyes and keep it in the midst of thine heart because he wants you to look at it and he wants you to begin to you remember what he said out of your better shall flow what rivers of what living water Rivers of living water. So if, if he want me to let it not depart from my eyes and keep them in the midst of my heart because he want me to start speaking it. He want me to begin to declare it. He want me to begin to, 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 to put voice to his word. Amen. Why? Because see, oh my God. Mm, yeah, yeah. I see that, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Someone is already, someone is getting the revelation of what I'm just saying. Someone is getting a revelation of what I'm saying right now. Oh, glory to God. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. And the power, it was just like, it was just like somebody just reached out and touched my garment. Amen. Virtue went out of me. Virtue went out of me just that fast. Somebody got a hold of what God is saying, and they pulled, they pulled, they made a withdrawal on the anointing that's upon my life right now. Amen. They took that. They took that. Amen. Healing is already manifested right now in, on, the behalf of the, on the behalf of the whoever that person was. Amen. God's healing power is already manifested right now. Glory to God. And so we see right here, we see right here, and, and, and it said in verse number, verse number 21, he said, For they uh, let them not depart from thine eyes. Talk about his word. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life and health and healing to all the flesh. 
Amen. So when I keep the word of God in my heart, now out of my and out of my belly, I'm going to begin to speak the word of God. I'm going to begin to declare the word of God. I'm going to begin to uh, recite what God has said in His word. I'm going to begin to speak it back out. Amen. Why? Because I know that the the power of God's word is released through our words. It's released through our words. I'm going to speak it, and God is going to confirm it, and He's going to perform it. I don't have to confirm it. I don't have to. Conf I don't have to perform it. The Holy Spirit is at work now. Why? Why is the Holy Spirit at work? Because I'm standing on the Word of God. I'm declaring what God said. I have. I, it's in my mouth and it's in my heart, and I'm speaking out of my spirit what God has said. Amen. I'm speaking it back out of my spirit what God has said. Why? Because the the Spirit of God is in me. The Spirit of God is in me. God's miracle working power is resting on the inside of me. How am I going to How am I going to release it? I'm going to release it by faith. I'm going to release it in words. I'm going to release it in words. Why? How am I going to do that? I'm going to speak health and healing over my body, regardless of how I feel. I'm going to speak health and healing over my body. Why? Because the the power of God is in the life. The, the life of God is in the power of the word. The power of God. It's in the life of the word. Amen. The life of God is in the power of the word. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we understand that God is going to bring, God is going to begin to, God is going to begin to show up on your behalf. Amen. So notice what it said, verse number 22, it said, for they are life to those that find them. Amen. So once you start, once you start to speak the word of God out of your, out of your, out of the bottom of your, out of, out of, out of, the, out, of out of your heart. Amen. When you begin to speak the word of God out of the bottom of your heart, it's the, Bible, the, the word of God said, verse number 22 said, for they are life. What is the life? The words that you're speaking out of you, they're coming out full of the zoe of God, the life of God. The life and the nature of God. Go begin to, out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Not rivers of dead water, but rivers of living water. Glory to God. So health and healing is coming out of your spirit. Right out of your spirit, and it's going, oh, Shela Bakoto Lalabaka, and it's going right into your ears. Hallelujah. Remember, Romans 10 17, so did faith come in by what? Hearing, and hearing by the word of God. See, I will hear the word coming out of my spirit, speaking over my own body, and I will believe it, and I will receive it before I would from anyone else. Why? Because I'm reading out of the Bible myself. Amen. I'm reading it myself. I'm hearing it. I'm hearing what I'm reading, and I know that God cannot lie. And you got to come to that same result. Amen. You got to know what God has said. You got to begin to speak it. You got to know that God is right there with you, that he will not leave you nor forsake you. So he said in verse number 22, for they are life. Talking about the word, folks. The word. The word of God is life and health and healing to all their flesh. Amen. Life and health. and Life, health, and healing. Amen. Look what he said. Look what he said in that, in that scripture, verse number 22. Look what he said. Keep thy heart. No, no. For they are life to those that find them. Then they said, health to all their flesh. They are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Now notice. Now notice, now notice what he said right here in verse number 23. Keep thy heart. So once the word come, once the word is deposited in your heart, now you gotta you gotta guard your heart because the devil he's gonna do everything he can to get you to to start saying things contrary to what God has said, Amen. And if you start talking contrary to what God has said, you're gonna start talking against your health. You're gonna start talking against what God has said concerning your health. Now you have gave the enemy a tool to stop you from receiving your your healing, Amen. So you gotta keep your words with you gotta guard your heart with all diligence. You got to guard your heart before dealing. Why? Because out of it are the issues of life. The word of life is in your it's, it's in your mouth. Your health, your healing is in your mouth. When you allow the word of God to penetrate your mind and, 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 and minister to your spirit to strengthen your inner man, amen, now you can declare the word of God that you have allowed to, 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 to germinate in your spirit you can allow that word to come right back up out of your spirit in faith, and it's going to produce life over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
It's going to produce life over you. It's going to produce health and healing over you. Amen. How's it going to do that? Because you heard the word. You received the word. The word has dropped into your spirit, not just in your ears, but now it has dropped in your spirit. Now, when you need it the most, when you need the most, you begin to open up and you begin to declare what God said. What are you doing? You are giving life to the word. How are you giving life to the word? The spirit of life is on the inside of you. And the moment you allow that word to germinate in your spirit, that word takes on life. That word takes on the life and the nature of God. Why? Because the spirit of God is on the inside of you. And when you allow the word of God to take on the nature of God, Amen. When you open up your mouth and begin to speak, you are releasing the ability of God to bring about his will and his desire in your life through the words that is coming out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Through the words that is coming out of your mouth. God wants us to understand health and healing is in the power of the spoken word. And it got to come right out of our heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Hallelujah. Am I making any sense? Amen. 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 So now, he said, now, and then he tell you in verse number 24, he tells you, he tells you in verse 23, you have to guard your, verse number 23 tell you, to guard your heart with all diligence, and to keep your heart with all diligence. But in verse number 24, it tells you to put away these, put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Amen. God don't want you talking against what you believe in him for. And so many, and so often we 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 we, we, we run upon someone, we, we we and they wonder, well, how you feel, how you feeling? What have you been up to? And, and then they want to they want they want to get you to engage in a in a in a conversation that is totally that is totally opposite than what you should be talking about because then they don't they're not following the plan of God for their life and they try to pull you back off of the plan of God for your life trying to get you to say things that is contrary to what you're believing for amen trying to get you to talk against it, and then they're going to poke fun at you to make you think that you shouldn't be doing it either. You ever, you ever, you ever, talk, you ever went around your friends? <laughs> you ever went around your friends and, and uh, they, you, you oh, don't be talking about, I don't want to talk about that God stuff, I don't want to talk about the, the Bible, amen? Let's talk about, and then, then they're going to tell you what they want to talk about, and then they're going to try to get you to engage in what they want to talk about, when they want to engage what you want to talk about. You know that that that, that, that that's the one of the that's one of the biggest tricks of the devil when it comes to you and your friends and sometimes even your family members. Amen. They want to talk about something totally different than what you need to talk about because if you talk about what they talk about, they know that that, 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 that they're gonna pull you back down to their level. Because see, they're not trying to they're not trying to expire to nothing. They're not trying to, they're not trying to expire to nothing. They just happen to, they just happen that that you decide to talk with them. Amen. But when you start to minister to them, then that's a totally different story. Now they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna pull you back down to their level. Why? Because they don't want you ministering to them. They like their darkness. They like they like the darkness rather than the light. Because the moment you start to minister to them, the light started to come on, start to shine out, start to shine. And then that light going to cause them to become convicted. Amen. Because your words, because you have allowed the word of God to go from beyond your ears and into your spirit. When you begin to speak the word of God, your words are coming out anointed. Your words are coming out powerful. Your words are coming out full of God's glory and strength. Amen. And when they go to coming against you, when they go to tell you, be, I don't want to talk about it. You, you, if you, if you, if you had enough boldness, you can look at that person right between the eyes, and you're not talking to the person; you're talking to the spirit that is in the person. 
devil, in the name of Jesus, I command you by the authority of him who have called me, come out of him now. I remember one night I was, I, I was, uh, I, I went by this, this home, this house, and everybody was sitting around the table drinking and smoking their stuff and all this stuff, and, and they said, preacher, who asked you to come by here? Nobody called for you. And I had just come off a three-day fast. <laughs> I had just come off a three-day fast. And, and, that, and, and they jumped, them devils jumped all over me, thought, and they thought that I was going to back down. <laughs> they thought I was going to back down. I looked at them people sitting at that table. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I bind every devil that's sitting at this table. I bind you now. Then everybody said, shh, 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 be quiet, be quiet. He knows something. I, I, they never mess me up no more. You know why they didn't mess me no more? Because I would not allow them the pleasure. I know who I am. I know the power and authority that God has given me. Thank you, Lord. And I exercise that power and authority when needed. The devil will try you, and if you allow him to, he will buffalo you. And he will make you back down. But if you stand your ground, you speak the word of God. Devil, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I bind you. You have no power here. I loose you from your assignment in the name of Jesus. I speak to that spirit of infirmity. I speak to that sickness. I speak to that disease. I command you to be healed now. I speak to that fever. I, command, I rebuke you and I command you to go now in the name of Jesus. You know that Jesus spoke to he, in Peter's mother's law, land in bed, his mother-in-law was sick with a, with a great fever. And Jesus spoke to that fever, and that fever heard him. He rebuked that, that fever. He said, he said, I rebuke you. Come out of her. That, that fever heard Jesus and came out. That means, that showed me that sickness can hear. Sickness can hear. It's a spirit. You need to understand that, folks. You need to understand that. And remember the woman with the issue of blood? Remember the woman with your blood? Amen. She said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. Why did she say, if I could just grab his hand? If I could just grab his, if I could just grab his ankle. Amen. If I could just hug his neck. <laughs> I, you know, just a physical touch. She didn't say nothing like that. She said, if I may touch but his what? His clothes, the hem of his garment. Why did she only want to touch him of his garment? She knew the man that was wearing no clothes was anointed. Amen. The man that's wearing these clothes right here is anointed. <laughs> that same virtue, the same anointing that's resting upon my life is right now resting upon this garment. That's the same thing that woman saw in Jesus. She saw that this man was anointed, and she know that if he's anointed, then the clothes he have on, that anointing that's upon him, is flowing into the garment. Amen. Remember what it tells us in Acts chapter 19, verse number 11, 12. Amen. Remember Paul was, was, was ministering with the aprons and the handkerchiefs and so forth and so on. Amen. The healing is not in the, it's not in the, 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 the napkin. It's not in the apron. Amen. It's not in the cloth. What was in the cloth? It was the anointing that was released. That tangible anointing was, uh, was retained in the cloth. Amen? In the cloth. And that's why Jesus had on his clothes that tangible anointing that he was walking in was, 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 was also in the garment that he had on. That's why she said, if I may touch but his clothes. If I may touch but his clothes. Hallelujah. Yeah, and everyone that touched him was healed. They didn't grab his body, they grabbed his clothes. Amen. And, and I remember what he said in Luke, Luke 4, 18. Luke 4, 18, 19. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach the liberty to the captive, and recover the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. You know, the only ones that got healed was the ones that believed that statement. The only ones that got healed are the ones that believed that statement. Because he said, in them, he said, I couldn't do no mighty works because of their unbelief. But those that believed 
They got what they were looking for. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Are y'all getting this tonight? And so we got to learn, we got to learn that we have to guard our heart. Is that what he said in, in Proverbs 4, verse 23? He said, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. In other words, we got to guard our heart. We got to guard our heart. Amen. We got to guard our heart. Glory to his name. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so now, so now when I when I look at this, I can see, I can see something here that that God has wants us to understand. Amen. Can I take you to another scripture? Holy Shakamala Kusi Linga Mangala Si. Hommalaki la bandali si. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. Look at verse number 17. You know, we're talking about health and healing. Amen. Is in the power of the spoken word. Amen. So now that I'm looking, now that I'm looking at this, I, 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 I wasn't going to hear, but, but when I started turning my pages, in my, in my spirit, I knew that I should come right here because it's, it's dealing with the health. Amen. Notice what's saying in verse number 17. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. For I will restore what? Health. I will restore health unto who? Unto thee. Unto thee. That means unto me or unto you. I will restore health unto thee. And then he said, I will heal thee of thy wounds. Now that's powerful. That's a powerful statement. Amen. I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord. Said the Lord. Amen. See, God not only wants to deliver you, he wants to restore you. He wants to heal you. He wants to bring you to a place of inner peace. Amen. But as long as you, as long as you keep hanging around the people talking about, well, you know that all that stuff passed away when the disciples of old passed away, they're going to keep you in unbelief. They're going to keep you in unbelief, and they're going to keep you away from your help and from your healing. Amen. And before you know it, you're going to be you're going to be lined up in intensive care, waiting for them, wait for them to pull the plug. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you see, you, 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 allow, you allow the devil to, to pull you away from the spirit of life. And, he, and, and, and the only thing he could offer you was death. That's right. The only thing he could offer you was death. Because life and death is in you. It's in you. You've been given the power to release it. That's why you got to understand the words that you speak. They are spirit and they are life. My God. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Oh, glory to God. That's right. You better choose life. <laughs> you know what's good for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. So he said in verse number 17, he said, for, help, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wound. See, it is God's desire to heal and restore. It is God's desire. You know why? Because he's our father. He's our father. Why wouldn't he want us to be healed and restored? Amen. Lydia, put that away.
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So now I want you to look here. I want you to look at another place here. I hate when things interfere with the anointing like that. But I know she don't know no better, but it still don't help the anointing at all. But in the, but, but in the book of Matthew, let's look here in the book of Matthew. And let's look here at uh, chapter 8. The book of Matthew chapter 8. Amen. The record that when a leper saw Jesus, he came worshiping, but also questioned whether it was God's will for him to be healed. He said, if you, will, if you are willing, will you please heal me? <laughs> if you're willing, Lord, will you heal me? Amen. But notice what, notice what the word of God said. I just, that was just a paraphrase. I was just paraphrasing that. Amen. But look at the book of Matthew chapter 8, verse number, verse number 2. He said, and behold, there came a leper worship, and worshiping him. Now this leper, I can imagine the leper was far off and he saw Jesus and, 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 and he saw the crowd around Jesus. Now he knows that if he went into this crowd any other day, he could be stoned to death. He could be stoned to death because the leper had no business going around uh, the public when he's, when he's been redeemed as lepers. Amen. He know better. But this man did it anyway. He, and, and, but he, but, but he, had, he had to make a choice. See, a lot of us, we had a crossroad in our life. We had a crossroad in our life. We got to make a decision whether or not we're going to receive the promise of God or whether we're going to be talked out of the promise of God. Amen. You see, he had to make a choice. You're going to have to make a choice whether or not you're going to be healed or delivered. It's going to be your decision. Amen. Because, you see, the word of God is nigh thee. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. You got to make a decision whether or not you're going to receive the promise of God. I can't make you do it. It's going to be a decision that only you can make. Amen. That only you can make. So now, notice what he says right here. Notice what he says. Verse number one. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitude followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord... If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. In other words, Lord, I don't know if you can help me or not, but I've heard so many good things about you, and I, and I, and I believe that you can if you want to. So, Lord, if, thou, if you will, would you make me clean? I can, can, you, can you imagine a man talking to, talking to Jesus like this? Then all of a sudden, Jesus, just, he looked at the man with compassion, he didn't stutter. He didn't withdraw. He didn't, what are you doing up here? <laughs> he didn't do nothing like that. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him and said, I will. It is my will. Be thou clean. Amen. And the Bible said, and the Bible said, glory to God. And, and the Bible said, and, 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 and I, he said, I will be that clean. And, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Verse number 3, Matthew 8, 3. He said, immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Let's look at Mark chapter, Mark chapter 5 real quick. Mark chapter 5. We're, getting, we, we're winding down now. We're winding down now. Mark chapter 5. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse number 25. We talked about it just a little bit while ago. But now I want you to, we're going to look at the scripture itself. Amen. Mark chapter 5 verse 25 says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, see, she only heard about him. She didn't have the, the real knowledge. She only heard. She didn't have 
our face, our, our, our face to face uh, uh, experience with Jesus. She only heard about Jesus. She only heard about it. And then notice what she said. Notice what she said. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, See, before she came out of, this is what the Bible said, before she said. In other words, she had already been rehearsing it in her heart. She had already been rehearsing it in her mind what, she was going, what was going to happen when she got to Jesus. She already knew what was going to happen. She knew it in her heart. You got to know in your heart when you go to Jesus, you got to know in your heart that God has already gave you the answer. You can't go to God doubting him. You got to go to God in faith. This woman, she calls her faith to, to, be, to be active by speaking over her own life. She said, if I may but touch but his clothes. She's speaking over her own life. If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. You got to start speaking the word of God over your life. You got to start declaring what God is saying concerning your health, concerning your health and healing. Amen. You can't just take it for granted that God, I know God can heal me if he want to. Of course he can if he want to. Do you want him to? That's the question. He wants to, but do you want him to? The way you answer that question is yes, Lord, your word declares it. I believe it. That settles it. You said you bore my sickness. You said you, 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 you bore my sin on your, in your own body on a tree. 1 Peter 2, 20, 1 Peter 2, 25. What is it, 2, 25 or 2, 22? Amen. <laughs> anyway, he, he bore our sins in his own body on a tree, and by whose stripes we were healed. Amen. <laughs> and so if we were healed in 1 Peter, amen, and then in Isaiah it said we are healed. Amen. And then in Matthew chapter 8 verse number 17. Oh glory to God. He took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Amen. So if he took them and Isaiah said that we are and First Peter said we were then I say I am. <laughs> I say I am. Amen. So what do you say? It's not, it's not it, what I say is irrelevant. But what you say, since you're the one that believes in God for healing, what do you say? Because that's what's going to count. What you say. And what you say must be in line with what he says. Because you got to come in agreement. With what he said. The Bible said, if any two shall agree as touching anything that shall ask of the Father which is in heaven, it shall be done. And then it says in John chapter 14, ask what you will that your joy may be full. I did it say, ask what you will can we, and, he shall, and, and he will do it for you. Amen. Let's look at chapter 14, verse. Let's look at it and see. I, want, I don't want to get that wrong. Because <laughs> sometimes I get so caught up and I say things. Oh, hallelujah. John chapter 14, and I'm going to take you right to the scripture. I'm not going to run all over the page trying to find it. I already know where it is. Amen. So he said, verse number 14, if you shall ask anything according to, if you shall ask anything, he said, I will do it. I will do it. I would do it. Amen. If you ask anything, I would do it. So, so God wants to restore. God wants to heal. God wants to deliver. Amen. He wants you to experience the higher life. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. And so let's just go back. Let's just, let's just read down. Uh, let's just read verse number 13. He said, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen. If you if you if you shall ask anything in my name, he said, I would do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comfort that he may abide with you forever. 
even a spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And I will not leave you comfortless yet a little while, and the world see me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. And at that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Then the last phrase is, and I in you. And I in you. Hallelujah. That means the word of God. According to John chapter 1, verse number 14, takes on flesh. The moment you begin to allow the word of God to germinate in your spirit, it takes on flesh and become, it become alive. And it begins to produce the life and the nature of God on the inside of you. Now, your job is to begin to speak it out in your own words over your life, over your health. And God said in Mark chapter 16 and verse number 20 that he will confirm the word with signs following. He said in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 13 that he hasted to perform his word. God said in the book of Isaiah, chapter, 11, chapter 55, verse 11, he said, his word will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish that what pleases him. Folks, all God is expecting of us is to speak the word in faith concerning our health. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm done for tonight. Mm. Thank you, Father. Is this Sunday night? <laughs> it ain't Wednesday night. It ain't Tuesday night. This is my God. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God. I have declared that what you have given me tonight. Father, we know that health and healing is in the power of your spoken word. And I showed them, Father, in the book of Isaiah, in the book of, uh, of Proverbs, where you, where you instructed us, you gave us instruction to attend to your word, to put it first in our, in our lives and in our hearts. But God, you know, we, sometimes we hear, but we don't hear. We heard but we don't understand. And I'm asking you, Father, in the name of Jesus, let the understanding of the words that I have spoken, oh God, let it come forth with revelation, knowledge in the heart of these men and women under the sound of my voice and those that are with us by the internet. Father, let not your word fail concerning them. As they put their trust in you, and as they begin to declare your work over their own health and over their own life, God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus that you will do exactly what you said that you would do in, I, in, in the book of, of Mark chapter 16, verse 20. You said that you would confirm your word with signs following. And then you see it again in, in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 13. Did, did you hasten to perform your word? God, I believe that. And so I'm releasing the, that word, God, upon the hearts of your people in faith. And I release the anointing right now, Father, to accompany that word. And Father, I speak life. I speak health. I speak healing over your people. I cancel in the spiritual realm every argument concerning their health. And Father, let their hearts be open. Let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And so let them be healed in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for it. And I praise you for it. And I bless you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Say it with me. This day, 
Everybody say this day. I choose to believe the word. I will speak what God has said concerning the word over my health, over my healing. I will not allow this word to fall to the ground. I will rehear it. I will rehear it again. And I will do what the word says. I will not be a gift for hearer. I will not be a forgetful hearer. I will be a doer of the word. According to James 1.22. Father, I thank you that your word is life, health, and healing to all my flesh. To all my flesh. And today, I receive divine health and healing for my body. I speak to every organ of my body. I speak to every blood vessel of my body. I say be healed. I say be healed now. In Jesus' name. I speak to my heart. And you will function properly. I declare it. I decree it. I speak to my pancreas. I speak to my liver. I speak to my colon. I speak to my to my uh, my spring. I command you. I speak to my eyes. I command you. Be healed. Be healed now in Jesus name. Woo! Glory to God. Mm. Mm. Oh! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woo, yes. He was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquity. Surely he bore our sorrows and with his stripes we are healed. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! Oh, glory to God. Oh, I just love it. I love it. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm done preaching. I ain't gonna, I'm done. I'm done for the night. Mm, that was powerful. Hallelujah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, glory to God. As we come to this portion of the service, Lord, I thank you, Father, that, that you have showed yourself strong through the message. Oh, glory to God. Mm. And, Father, I gave instructions concerning your word I did not withhold anything back and there's more that I could share but there's always another day that we can look forward to hearing from your divine word and so Father we thank you today for what we have heard and received and that your word will not fall to the ground but it will accomplish that what pleases you according to your word. And we will not talk contrary to what you have spoken to our hearts. But our words will come in line with your will and your desire for our health concerning our health. And we will walk in agreement with your word. And you will confirm your word. We'll sign following. We thank you for it in advance. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Oh. Thank you father. For the anointing. That's in this place. Hallelujah. Now father as we prepare for giving. To advertise our offerings Lord God. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch every heart, even those with us by the internet. Father, there's many with us by the internet that have never sown a seed into this ministry as of yet. I'm asking you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch their hearts 
that they will begin to sow seed and not just trying to get fat on the word without releasing their faith in their seed. Father, and I know that the moment they release that seed, that mirror is going to break loose in their body. I know it, God. I know it just as sure as I'm standing here. For those that are believing you for healing, just the, the, at the moment they make up their mind that they're going to sow a seed, Father, into this anointing, God, that anointing is going to boomerang back and it's going to cause them to experience divine health and healing. I know it, God, just as sure as I'm standing here. So, Father, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. Those that are here and those that are with us by the internet, Father, as we prepare to give, you speak to our hearts. And you that are giving by the internet, I, you go to my website, that's LarryBurkinMinistries.com, and you use your ATM card, your credit card, you plant your seed in faith. And if there's sickness in your body, you name that seed concerning the area of your body that you need God to touch you in. Amen. And if you're going to send it through the mail, you write your check, make it payable to Ladbergen Ministries or your money order, Ladbergen Ministries or New Life in Christ. And write at the bottom of that check or that money order what you're believing for. Is it healing? Then put it there. If you believe for financial breakthrough, put it there. Write it down there. Name that seed. Don't give that seed without a name. Amen. And then expect your harvest. Expect your harvest. Release your faith and expect your harvest. Father, I thank you right now that as we prepare our giving, Lord God, that God, we've already purposed in our heart, God, what we want and what we're going to give. And God, as we give it, we believe for a thousand times more in the name of Jesus. We believe for a thousand times more in return back on it in Jesus' name. God bless you in your giving. Amen. Ah, ah. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. There's an envelope back there for those that want to sow a seed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I thank you now, Father, for those that have sowed their seed, those that are believing you, Father, for a breakthrough. Those that believe in you, Father, for healing. Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. And Father, I'm asking right now that you will breathe upon each and every one of them. Not let one, Father, not let one miss out on this breakthrough anointing that has been released. This Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Now, Father, mm, bring it back to their remembrance that what you have said. And as they sow that seed, let their faith be released in the seed that they sow. Let their faith be released in the seed that they sow. And expect the harvest of what they're believing for. I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I saw that in the spirit. You're going to receive a harvest from the seed that you sow tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Those by the internet and those that are here tonight, you're going to receive a harvest. Father, let's pray for those now that believe for salvation. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know that we are here tonight, that we all have been saved tonight, that are here in the service. But God, there are those that are with us by the internet, Father, that may have never asked you to come in their heart. And I'm asking right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch, that you would minister to their hearts in the name of Jesus. 
If you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, say this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, and I repent of my sin, and I ask you to come into my heart. I receive you now as my Lord and as my Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. If you say that simple prayer, I believe right now that you are born again, child of God, and the angels of God is rejoicing because of you right now. God bless you. We thank God for you for special prayer. Let me go ahead and pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my dear sister, Lord God, and I ask you, Father, Lord, that you would touch her, that you would minister to her, and God, that you would show keep her strong, Father, in the name of Jesus. I declare that she walk in divine health and healing in Jesus' name. And I thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Come on, my brother. I'd like the Lord to help me so I can get closer with my wife and son. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I release my faith for my brother, Lord God. And Father, he's desiring restoration. He desiring restoration in his relationship with his wife and his, and his son. And God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus that you would Direct his every step toward this, toward this reconciliation. Give him the right words to say, the right time to say them. And Father, should there be anything in his heart and in his life that he need to bring correction to so that, that she will not reject him, Father, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you reveal it to his heart so everything that he do, Father, will bring glory to the kingdom of God. <laughs> Because I know, Father, that you're not willing that any should perish. You're not, and you, and, 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 and you didn't put a wedge in their marriage, God. The enemy had done this. And so, Father, I'm asking you for, for, for restoration. Show him what to do, Father. And then, Father, as you show him, give him the grace to carry it out. In Jesus' name. I thank you for it now. Let your grace rest upon his heart for this task. In Jesus' name, amen. You. You're welcome. <laughs> Come on, brother. <clears throat> Father, I pray for my brother in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand continue to rest upon him. I apply the blood of Jesus from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, God. And God, I'm asking for a supernatural touch. Supernatural touch from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. In the name of Jesus. I speak life. I speak life. I cancel in the spiritual realm every argument concerning him. And I release divine wisdom divine knowledge, divine understanding over him. Now, Father, as he yield to it, you're going to show him supernaturally the things that you have prepared for him to walk in in these next upcoming months of this year. I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. He's going to talk to you about the rest of this year. <laughs> oh, James. Oh, glory to God. My God. I felt the power going in there, too. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Let us just all stand up. We're going to go ahead and prepare to go home. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this night. We thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to come together, Lord. And, Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus that you will keep us safe as we leave this place. Let us not leave your presence. But God, let our hearts be knitted together, one to another. And also, let your love be shed abroad in each of our hearts, that we will not do anything contrary to your will concerning our brothers, our sisters. But that we will walk in love regardless. Father, I bless them. I thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for joining us today. Join us again on this coming Tuesday night for our next live service. Amen. God bless you. Go hit that red button on that back there.